Hey, great to see you. My name's Toy House, and today we're going to be talking about Death Knight Tanking and Wrath of the Lich King Patch 3.3.5, all three specializations, whether you want to play a Blood Death Knight Tank, Unholy, or Frost. We're going to go through all that today, and we're going to start with stats. What stats should you get on your Death Knight Tank? Well, the really important one's actually defense rating. You're going to want to get 540 of it. The reason you want to do that is because that is the defense cap. Now, once you're defense capped, you can no longer be critically hit in PvE. This is super important because if you're getting crit in PvE, your healer is going to be getting anxiety, and you don't want to give your healer anxiety. It's going to make you much more tanky having that defense cap. It also increases the damage mitigation of Icebound Fortitude, and your chance to be hit will be decreased by 5.6%. A bunch of reasons to get that defense cap. Everyone's going to thank you. Now, when it comes to resilience, I don't recommend going out of your way and getting it. I don't recommend getting any of it on your gear, actually. But if you have it laying around, it actually does reduce the chance to be critically hit in PvE as well as pvp and wrath of the lich king it isn't until mists of pandaria where that turns into pvp resilience and has no effect in pve now when it comes to hit rating you're going to want about nine percent spell hit and eight percent melee hit now the reason for those two numbers is because nine percent spell hit combined with the plus eight percent hit from glyph of dark command will guarantee that you never miss a taunt and that can be very important to be able to have that consistency with your threat generation being able to get those snap taunts whenever you need them and of course that eight percent melee hit can is going to be very important so that you never miss a death strike so that you're always getting your health back when you expect to be now when it comes to expertise there's a lot to know about it. I'm going to try to sum it up for you. 26 expertise is dodge cap, when your attacks can no longer be dodged. If you get 20 expertise from gear and 6 from the talent veteran of the third uh, war in the blood talent tree, you're going to be dodge capped. Of course, dodge cap can be very helpful if you want to avoid getting your death strikes dodged. Again, that powerful self-heal ability. Alternatively, if you're not playing blood, you can bring 21 expertise from gear and get an additional 5 from Tundra Stalker Talent in the Frost Tree or Rage of Revendare in the Unholy Tree if you're playing Deep Frost or Unholy Tank. Now, parry cap is 56 expertise when your attacks can no longer be parried. If you bring 50 expertise from gear, you get that other 6 from Veteran of the Third War. Now, the reason parry cap is important and the reason I'm bringing it up is because of parry haste. Now, parry haste is a reduced swing time for a creature's next swing after it successfully parries an attack. However, only a few bosses have this mechanic enabled, and those bosses are Halion, Lady Death Whisper, Syndragosa, Anixia, Acid Maw, Dreadscale, and Ice Howl. Now, the only real threats on this list, in my opinion, are Syndragosa and Halion, so you should parry cap for those bosses specifically, especially in ICC 25 Man Heroic. These bosses can get very, very powerful when they get that parry haste. Now, when it comes to Stamina, this is your top priority stat, and the reason for that is because many Death Knight heals are a percentage of total HP, so the more you have, the more you're going to heal. For example, Death Strike is a percentage, Vampiric Blood is a percentage, and uh, Rune Tap is another one, so pretty much all of Death Knight heals are going to be a percent of total HP, making your self heals much more effective if you have bigger health pool. When it comes to armor, this is what mitigates physical damage. Plate items will have the most armor and cloth will have the least. So I recommend you wear plate to maximize your armor. And you're also going to get five uh, attack power for every 180 armor you have when you spec into bladed armor, which is at the top of the blood tree. Now, when it comes to dodge and parry chance or avoidance, I would say they're very helpful stats in order to use more rune strikes, which can only be used after you dodge or parry. And you'll also get increased damage mitigation from Army of the Dead, which gives you damage mitigation based on your dodge and parry chance. However, if you focus too much on dodge and parry, in my opinion, and you get unlucky and you don't dodge or parry, then you're going to die really quickly. So I would suggest you aim for maximizing your defense rating first, get that defense cap, then just dump everything you can into stamina, and of course, get as much armor as you can, and that is your core survivability stats that I recommend. Now, moving away from stats, let's start diving into different blood Death Knight talents as well as Frost and Unholy as well as the glyphs that you should get with those specializations. First up, let's talk about my favorite build of all, the standard Blood Death Knight tank. Now the reason I like this build so much is because it brings both Abominations Might and Improved Icy Talons. This is 10% attack power and 20% melee haste to the entire party in raid. The only other place you can get 20% melee haste is from Wind Fury Totem from a Shaman, 
any shaman can bring that abominations might uh, marksman hunter can also bring that or an enhanced shaman um, but you know this is very very helpful for your tank to be able to provide both those buffs on top of that this has very powerful survivability talents uh, in this tree you've got uh, all sorts of good stuff. You've got Rune Tap. Um, you've got, a, you know, Abomination's Might. You've got Spell Deflection. Uh, you have a ton of very strong damage mitigation talents, making this uh, very, very popular uh, for standard blood tanks. When it comes to your Glyphs, Glyph of Disease makes it so that you can just use Pestilence and both your diseases on the target will be refreshed to their maximum duration glyph of dark command we talked about a little bit earlier that's going to make sure that your taunt or dark command will always hit glyph of vampiric blood is a very powerful defensive cooldown which restores your health and then makes it so that you get more health back from healing restoration effects that's going to increase its duration when it comes to minor glyphs they typically are cosmetic in nature or help very very uh minorly but uh, Glyph of Horn of Winter will increase your uh, the duration of that by a minute. Glyph of Raised Dead, so they have no reagent for that. And then Glyph of Pestilence um, will actually give you plus five yard radius. I think that's the most helpful of all of them. And of course, if you have enough spell hit or you're not worried about your uh, Dark Command hitting, you can replace that with Glyph of Rune Tap. So one of my favorite builds of all time. I uh, can't wait to try this one out. Uh, it's got pretty much everything you could possibly want uh, for a spec, and it's very standard. This is a variation of that build. This this is the higher threat blood death knight tank build you can see we sacrificed a few things uh, mark of blood is gone uh, we got one point out of spell deflection um, we also uh, got three more points into bloody strikes um, so you're going to be doing much more damage you also got heart strike in this build so you are going to have um, that ability to uh, that's that's basically going to give you also increased damage so this is a uh, more of a threat generation um, high threat blood death knight build sacrificing just a little bit of survivability but really not that much to be totally honest and it still brings those two uh, talents abominations might and improved icy talents so this is also a very powerful and very popular death knight blood tanking uh, build but let's move on to Unholy. Now, this is a dungeon crawler Unholy DK tank build. I was really getting into this. I was like, wow, this is awesome. It's very different. And this is actually ideal for five man groups where this death knight's going to be dealing with a lot of aoe targeting you're the only tank you're not just the main tank um and and so uh this this build is really optimized for that you can see you've got morbidity at the top for reduced cooldown on death and decay which you're going to be using a lot you've got desecration one point in there gives 25 percent aoe move speed reduction which is very very powerful corpse explosion uh can be used for more aoe threat generation uh, that does a ton of damage and you also have a permanent ghoul with the master of ghouls talent now the corpse explosion can be used on any corpse or if you're in a desperate situation you can also sacrifice your ghoul making it explode for a ton of uh, shadow aoe damage so this build has much better aoe threat generation than the previous builds we looked at and that's why this is very very good for dungeons um, so if you're the type of person who just wants to spam dungeons whether they're regular or heroic this is a great build for it when it comes to glyphs, Glyph of Death and Decay gives plus 20% damage to Death and Decay. That's huge. Glyph of Death, or sorry, Glyph of Rune Strike plus 10% critical strike chance. Very, very strong. Glyph of the Ghoul is very strong as well, giving uh, your Ghoul an extra 40% of your strength and stamina, really beefing it up. Then some minor runes, Glyph of Blood Tap, so it doesn't do damage to you. Glyph of Corpse Explosion, so the radius is even bigger, can be very, very helpful. Then Glyph of Raised Dead, so there's no reagent. Very helpful when you have a permanent Ghoul and you're going to be summoning that a lot so this is a very fun build highly recommend you check it out um, you can even switch some points around if you feel that's necessary if you want desecration to be minus 50 percent move speed if you prefer um, you know whatever whatever um, suits your uh, fancy but very very cool dungeon crawler unholy death knight build now moving on to frost this is a two-handed frost death knight tank build Frost is incredibly powerful. Reading through some of these talents, I was surprised there is a ton of really good stuff here. So right off the bat, this build brings Abomination's Might and Improved Icy Talons, which the raids are going to be very happy for you to bring. But Acclamation is a very strong talent which boosts spell resistances. So that's very, very awesome. Depending on how many times you get hit by a spell, you're going to generate more and more resistance against it. That's what Acclamation does. It's there at the bottom. Unbreakable Armor is a defensive cooldown, which is going to help boost your strength and physical damage reduction by boosting your armor. So situationally very helpful. 
And then improved frost presence is actually really cool. Basically everything that frost presence does is just going to do a little bit more. So that just generally helps damage mitigation. Death chill and glacier rot are both going to improve threat generation. Death chill is going to make your next uh, basically frost ability be a critical strike. And then glacier rot is going to make your uh, diseases do more damage. So it's super strong. Nice uh, bonuses to um, actually glacier rot is also going to improve icy touch damage. So huge threat generation ability there. When it comes to glyphs, glyph of disease is really nice because, once again, pestilence is going to refresh your diseases. Instead of having to use two runes, you can use just one. Glyph of dark command, so you can be confident your taunts won't miss. Glyph of unbreakable armor is very strong as well. It's going to increase the amount that you get from unbreakable armor. And then Glyph of Horn of Winter, same thing we talked about with the other ones. It's uh, noted down there. So really strong build. Highly recommend, actually. Frost Death Knight tank can be quite powerful. Now, dual-wielding Frost Death Knight tanks, slightly different. Um, you can see the main difference is that you're sacrificing uh, Black Ice a little bit, and you're putting some points into Nerves of Cold Steel instead. So you're reducing a little bit of spell damage for uh, getting more offhand damage, as well as 3% crit or 3% hit. It's very necessary. Uh, when you're dual-wielding, you're still going to miss. It's really hard to never miss attacks when you're dual wielding just because of how blizzard designed having two one handers but um this build still definitely very viable um and it's very strong as well very similar to the two-handed version as well now let's talk about the rotation for each of these specializations so for the standard blood tank it's pretty straightforward you're going to open up with an icy touch Plague Strike, Pestilence, and Rune Strike when you're facing more than one mob. Follow up the next Blood Rune with a Blood Boil. Of course, just continue this rotation. Um, in, in this particular scenario, this is the setup. If you're setting up against a single uh, monster, maybe that's a boss, then you're going to use Blood Strike instead of the Pestilence and the Blood Boil. When it comes to after having those initial diseases set up, you can switch over and start using Death Strike and Blood Strike. And then once you've turned your frost and unholy runes into death runes by using death strike you can then start using icy touches for uh lots and lots of threat threat generation icy touch is the single highest um threat generation ability for single target that death knights ham have and potentially the highest generating threat ability in the game if you're in frost presence so this is sort of the rotation you can open up in three different ways or i guess two different ways depending on if it's an aoe pull or if it's a single target pull um, and then from there switch over to using death strike icy touch pestilence to refresh your diseases and I kind of wrote that down there. Once you have both diseases up, go ahead and use Death Strike to convert those runes into Death Runes. Um, you're going to want to use Blood Strike on cooldown. You want to keep your Blood Runes on cooldown as much as you can so that you can activate Blade Barrier, which is going to be a very nice defensive cooldown. And that's only going to be active once your Blood Runes are on cooldown. Runic Power should only be used on Rune Strike, but if you are the off tank or you're not currently being attacked, you can use Death Coil to dump your Runic Power instead if you have the global cooldowns available. So this is a pretty basic thing. You might want to run through it a few times, practice the rotation, um, you know, one time for AoE pulls, one time for single target, um, but it's all here, all the information you need to reference. Now it comes for the rotation for the Dungeon Crawler Unholy Death Knight build. It's a little bit different. You're going to be using Death and Decay as your opener. Death and Decay you're going to be using a lot. That's why you got Morbidity. And then from there you can use Icy Touch, Plague Strike, Pestilence for the AoE pull. Again, if it's single target, go with that Blood Strike. And then after you use Pestilence, your next Blood Rune could be used on Blood Boil again for that AoE pull. And again, I kind of wrote it out here, but Icy Touched, when Icy Touch, when used in Frost Presence, is the highest single target threat generating ability. So uh, very, very powerful. You want to use that as much as you can in order to ensure that your DPS never, ever take aggro from you. Death and Decay, Death and Decay is fantastic for AoE pulls, especially since you specialized into it with this build and you've got the Glyph. Death Strike, very powerful self-heal, but more importantly, is going to be converting your runes into death runes, allowing you to spam Icy Touch in the future. So this is, uh, a, you know, if you're going to be a pro Death Knight tank, uh, you use a lot of Death Strikes in preparation for needing big threat generation. So let's say right before a boss, you use Death Strike twice. So now you have 
literally four death runes, right? So you've got four death runes and you've got uh, two uh, blood runes ready. So you can basically do four icy touches and then you can do two, two blood strikes. Um, obviously, you probably want to use a, a plague strike in there before you start using blood strike. But um, you, can, you can do a ton of threat generation by converting your runes to death runes in anticipation of needing to do a ton of threat. Now, what's really cool about the Dungeon Crawler Unholy Death Knight build is that you have a ghoul. And the ghouls come with Gnaw, which is a three second stun on a one minute cooldown. You can use this either for damage mitigation, just to stop taking damage, or you can use it to pick up loose mobs. You can have your ghoul leap on a target and then gnaw it, and then it gives you enough time to get over there and then pick up that that uh, that mob that was loose. So a lot of flexibility with this build. Again, I'm like, wow, this is a really cool build. The uh, Dungeon Crawler Unholy Death Knight build. So moving on to defensive cooldowns. So Basically, Death Knights come equipped with a couple cool cooldowns. <laughs> They've got Icebound Fortitude, which reduces all damage taken by 30%. This is one of your best cooldowns because it's all damage. So Icebound Fortitude should be used in situations when you're almost certain you're going to die or you know huge damage is coming. This is, uh, I would say, one of your most powerful cooldowns that you have available. Army of the Dead, while channeling, the Death Knight takes damage less damage equal to the dodge plus parry chance. So depending on your dodge and parry, this will be a uh, different potency, but typically it's not going to be super powerful, uh, but it still can be helpful if you have no other options. Army of the Dead is another uh, damage mitigation ability if uh, you're taking too much damage. Anti-magic shell is pretty straightforward. You're going to be res absorbing 75% of spell damage. It can be very, very helpful for dragon fights or any fights with lots of spell damage. Um, it can only take up to absorb up to 50% of the Death Knight's health. Um, but very, very powerful, but it only lasts five seconds. Vampiric Blood is one of the most powerful, probably about equal with Icebound Fortitude in terms of strength. This is um, a basically almost like last stand. You get 15% of your maximum health, and then it also increases the amount of health generated through spells and effects by 35% for 10 seconds. After the effect expires, you lose the health, right? Just like last stand. The reason this is really powerful is because it's also going to increase the amount of healing you get. It's going to increase the amount of health you get from your own self heals. So combine this with other self heals like your death strike, your rune tap, or even um, when you sacrifice your ghoul, death pact. Vampiric Blood is very, very powerful cooldown. Unbreakable Armor is only going to be for Frost, but it reinforces your armor with a thick coat of ice, increasing armor by 25% and strength by 20%. This is very potent for uh, high physical damage fights, so it can be very helpful to use this when you're up against a boss that you know does a lot of physical damage. Blood Tap. Um, baseline does not do anything, but if you have four out of the five tier 10 set pieces the bonus grants 12 percent damage reduction for 10 seconds to your blood tap so it could be absolutely worth it to go get at least four out of five of uh, tier 10 in order for that set bonus to equip yourself with another defensive cooldown rune tap in the blood tree can convert one blood rune into depending on if you get improved rune tap 10 13 16 or 20 percent of your maximum health at max rank and also Depending on what rank of improved rune tap you have, it will also reduce the cooldown up to a maximum of 30 seconds. So, could be a pretty potent uh, cooldown depending if you get that improved rune tap. Um, and it's a nice defensive cooldown to help uh, self heal. Again, best paired with Vampiric Blood. When it comes to trinkets, they're absolutely defensive cooldowns. Citrina's Im Impeding Scarab is very similar to Vampiric Blood, increasing your maximum health for 15 seconds. And then Syndragos' Flawless Fang to help increase your resistances for 10 seconds uh, during those high spell damage fights. So this is just an example. Your trinkets might vary, but these are some of the defensive cooldowns you have available as a uh, blood or as a Death Knight tank. And that's pretty much it. Short and sweet. I uh, hope you guys like this guide. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. I uh, had a lot of fun putting this together. I thought this, the slides look pretty good. If you, I'm going to link the slides below if you want to take a look at it on your own time. If you have any questions, any comments, let me know. I'll try to respond to as many as I can. Um, and yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. It's been a pleasure, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.